Welcome to our lecture online. Here we have an interesting simpler harmonic problem or simple harmonic motion problem from the JE main test. Now when I read the problem I thought there were some errors in the question itself so let me point those out to you and maybe you might agree with me. All right we're given an equation y equals a times the sine of omega t plus the phase angle and they tell us that it's the time displacement equation of a simple harmonic motion, which is correct. That is the correct equation for a simple harmonic motion. It could be sine, it could be cosine, it could be plus phi, it could be minus phi, it doesn't matter, but it's the correct form. At t equals zero, the displacement of the particle is y equals a over two. That's half the maximum amplitude. And it's a positive value, so it's above the uh, what we call the equilibrium point, and it is moving, and here I had trouble with it because it says it is moving along the negative, and they said x direction. I think they meant to say y direction because the equ equation has the displacement in the y direction, so I changed it to a y. And when they say along the negative y direction, I think they should have said in the direction of the negative y direction. That should have been better. So it's moving downward. That's how I interpret it. Then the initial, I think I left off a and N here, then the initial phase angle will be, so we're looking for the phase angle. Notice that there's a plus here, so I have to deal with that. So what is the principle here? Well, first of all, let's make a pictorial of what's happening. So we have simple harmonic motion in the y direction. So you can see that there's going to be a maximum displacement, so this would be a max. And then down here, that would be minus a max, so we're now in the negative direction, so this would, this would be what we would call the y-axis, and the object is going back and forth in simple harmonic motion fashion, and it is located at this position right here at time equals zero. So at that moment, it is at this location where we have y equals a over two, and it's at that moment moving in a downward uh, direction. All right. So the next thing we want to do is get a feel for what this actually looks like from a mathematical perspective. So let's draw a diagram where we have displacement versus time. And let's first draw the y equal sine of omega t. So we're going to start off with y equals sine of omega t. And of course, we want to put an a in there because we have an amplitude. y equals the amplitude times the sine of omega t. And that would look something like this. Like that, where we have the maximum amplitude at a, the minimum amplitude here at negative a, and it starts out at zero when time equals zero. Of course, in this case, sine of zero is zero. So that is the correct form if there's no phase angle. Now, if we put a negative there in a phase angle, it moves everything to the right. If we put a positive there, it moves everything to the left. So what we're going to do now is we're going to say, okay, what if we have an equation that looks like this? And I'm going to use a different color. What if we have y is equal to a times the sine of omega t plus some sort of phase angle? Well, the plus means it's going to move to the left, which means that this graph is moving to the left like this. Like that, okay? So that shifts the, the whole graph to the left by a phase angle phi. Now what if we have a positive? What if it's uh, a negative, I should say, y equals a times the sine of omega, that should be omega t minus phi, that shifts everything to the right, so that graph would look like this. That, and it would shift everything to the right, by phase angle phi. So depending upon what sign we use, it moves to the left, moves to the right. So now what we're trying to do is we're trying to line this up in a way that at time equals zero, it's already been at its maximum value and now it's going back in the other direction. Which means we want everything to shift to the left here. And that makes sense because here we have a plus value. So that means everything needs to shift to the left in such a way that it's already on the way down. So now I need a different color again. I'll use blue in this case. So I'm going to shift it far enough like this 
So by the time it comes back down, a time equals zero, remember that's the time graph, a time equals zero, I'm at the halfway point. This is now A over two. So how much of a shift to the left did I need to accomplish that? From the black line to the blue line, how much of a shift is that? Well, notice that this part is already a 90 degree shift, pi over two. And then we need another 60 degrees because we know that the sine of 60, oh, no, the sine of 30 is uh, one half. So we want to go from 90 down to 30, that's a 60 degree shift, to get down to the point where we take the sine of 30 degrees, that's then going to become A over two. So pi over two, which is 90 degrees, plus 60 degrees, which is pi over three. And if we add those two together, that will be the entire phase shift. So now we can say that the phase shift is equal to 90 degrees plus 60 degrees, which is 150 degrees. Or we can say that the phase shift is equal to pi over two plus pi over three. And the denominator, common denominator is six, so that gives us three pi over six plus two pi over 6, which is equal to 5 pi over 6, and that should be the phase angle that we need to add right here in order to have the bob start or the, the particle start at this position at time equals 0. It needs to have a shift to the left of by, uh, 5 pi over 6. Now, is that one of the answers? Let's see here. Yes, it is. Right here, answer D gives us the correct phase shift shifting the whole curve to the left by 150 degrees or 5 pi over 6. And that is how it's done. I think in the most easy fashion, you can try to calculate everything, but I don't think we need to do that. We can simply just look at it and see how much do we have to shift the curve in the correct direction to get the particle to be at that position at time equals zero, traveling in the correct direction. It's now traveling back downward towards the equilibrium point. So it looks like everything is correct. That's actually the quick way of doing it. Mm -hmm. The straightforward way happened to be the quick way this time. I think so. I think this is the way I would want to look at that and try to solve it. And I think if you see it graphically, it gives you a better impression of how things are shifted around for the starting position. Okay. Mm -hmm.